thank you very much for inviting me to a fantastic session. Uh, before I start, just let me know that you can see my full screen. Yeah. Not yet, you can. Uh, not yet full, but uh, you can just go on. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Great. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, before I start, I just wanted to uh, extend my well wishes, considering the current situation, to you all and to everybody uh, across India. I hope that everyone is keeping as safe and well as can be. Uh, as mentioned, my name is uh, Atif Ramzan. I'm the Medical Education Director across Asia Pacific and also Europe, Middle East and Africa here at Smith & Nephew. Um, I will try to keep this short as I understand that um, there's still uh, some presentations to go through. But what I wanted to take you through very briefly was the time clinical decision support tool. Um, I wanted to focus on dressing types, but mainly on silver dressings, um, uh, to, to be honest with you, and hydrocellular foam. Um, I wanted to touch upon single negative pressure wound therapy and more importantly, the mode of action of that, and then just uh, finish up on some clinical studies. So the TIME acronym was uh, first developed by an international group of wound healing experts, and that was back in 2003. Um, what it does is that it provides a framework and a logical approach um, for a structured approach to wound bed preparations and a basis for optimizing the management of open chronic wounds, um, healing by secondary intention. So this concept was adopted from uh, a principle that was actually used in plastic surgery to ensure optimal preparation of a recipient wound bed before split thickness skin grafting. Um, it should be also recognized that the time principles, they're only a part of the sy systematic and holistic evaluation of each patient um, at every wound uh, assessment, as some of the speakers have mentioned before. Uh, the time clinical decision support tool, which you see up on your screen now, may be used to assist the non-wound expert clinician through an assessment of four major barriers to healing and to decide appropriate interventions. So what you see is this concept of having a portfolio by design. When you look at what will be the unique needs of a wound, it may have a non-viable tissue and require debridement. It may have a problem or a challenge with bacteria and require infection management. It might be dry or it might be wet. So you need interventions to maintain an optimum level of moisture. So these are the basic and fundamental principles in wound care. And they've been organized under the acronym of TIME, where T stands for non-viable tissue and debridement. The I is for infection management. M is for moisture balance, and E, as I said, is the epidermal edge. There's various acronyms that have been used. I, I believe uh, 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 the doctor used a measure before as well. <clears throat> so uh, just focusing on dress dressing types. Um, wounds can exist from across a, a vast continuum. If you have wounds that are dry, you will need to add a topical therapy that adds moisture to the wound. There may be opportunities in wounds that are not exudating a lot to put a cover dressing on them uh, that helps moisture, and that's film dressings. Um, then in wounds that have more exudate, uh, they may need a filler like a gelling fiber dressing or more absorbent dressings like a leave-in GB. So you can appreciate that there's a need for a broad spectrum of products from across the industry. So whether or not a patient develops an infection, as discussed during um, the presentations before, is a combination of factors. Infection is influenced by the number of bacteria, their virulence, uh, and the host's ability to actually respond. Um, it has been said that the host response may be the biggest and often neglected factor in the equation. So the extent to which bacteria contribute to wound healing uh, and or infection is also needs to be balanced. And what I wanted to touch upon is uh, nanocrystalline silver. So silver has maintained effectiveness as an antimicrobial agent due to its multiple mechanisms of action. So 
silver must be in ionic form to provide an antimicrobial effect. And Ag plus is the most common form of antimicrobial silver. Being water soluble, Ag plus is released in the presence of water or wound fluid. And the smaller the silver particle, the, the particle size, the greater the surface area, and the more Ag plus is made available to kill microbes. Silver has multiple mechanisms of action, such as inhibiting cellular respiration by deactivating certain enzymes and coenzymes necessarily necessary for the respiration. And silver can directly affect DNA, RNA, uh, preventing the formation of those enzymes and coenzymes. Silver also has the ability to alter cell membrane permeability, causing the bacterial cell to uh, lyse. Given all these different modes of action, true resistance to silver is very rare. Um, so let's take a look at the specific form that I'm speaking about, which is nanocrystalline silver. Uh, nanocrystalline silver is unlike any other type of silver. Um, the actor coat or the, or the uh, nanocrystalline silver dressing is produced using patented technology where silver is deposited. Uh, via physical vapor deposition. And what you have is a material that is created which is extremely porous with a greatly enhanced surface area. So the smaller the particles, the larger the surface area. <clears throat> As a result, what you have is large amounts of silver that are available for rapid release, i.e. quick kill. The individual clusters um, are very, very small. And the unique structure allows biologically active concentrations of silver ions to be delivered. So, excuse me. So what you can see is uh, the unique structure is able to be manufactured with a very unique process. So I'll just uh, skip past this. Um, silver is highly reactive iron and is most often bound as a compound in the dressing. So the more soluble, I'll just summarize this for you given the time, uh, the silver salt, the more active ionic silver is actually available. You'll note that Acticoat releases ionic silver as well as clusters. The other silver dressings release uh, only ionic silver, and this ultimately affects the dose of silver that is available uh, for antimicrobial activity. Um, this is a very interesting paper. Uh, it's a case series that uses hydrosurgical debridement and actico to minimize infection in open fractures. Um, it's a paper uh, by Nortit in 2013, and it's an actico used with a pin sealer. And, and in, I'll provide the details for you after. It's on the presentation. Please feel free to take a look. So just moving on to... Um, the Alevin gentle border dressing. So you can see the information up on your, on your screen, but what I wanted to go through was just four main quick points. So the dressing is made up of a polyurethane top layer, which acts as a bacterial barrier, which is waterproof and showerproof and is highly breathable. So it transpires excess moisture from the layer whilst preventing any kind of strike through or spotting, um, which as mentioned quite rightly by the speakers before can be uh, quite upsetting um, and noticeable for the patients as well. Uh, a hydrocellular foam uh, with high absorbency that requires fewer dressing changes, um, high fluid retention, and it prevents the risk of any kind of maceration and, optimum, and provides an optimum moist uh, environment. The absorption under compression maintains patient comfort in a difficult area. The third point is it has a perforated wound contact layer. So what this means is that the low adherent wound contact layer prevents tissue ingrowth and rather facilitates absorption into the foam. And lastly, it has an acrylic adhesive, which is uh, very importantly, non-irritant and hypoallergenic uh, water soluble. So it does not restrict absorption and it has strong adhesion uh, and keeps the dressing in place for uh, a relatively long time. 
So just moving on to lastly, single negative pressure wound therapy and its mode of action. So much has been spoken about single negative pressure wound therapy. And what I wanted to talk about here was, whereas clinicians in most countries will be very familiar with the use of negative pressure wound therapy to manage a range of different open wound situations uh, since the large scale commercial introduction of uh, VAC as commonly spoken in the 1950s, there's, there's less recognition that negative pressure wound therapy has also been used on closed wounds for at least a decade now. So what you can see here on the screen is a picture that shows incisional negative pressure wound therapy, uh, which is applied to closed wounds in an early peer reviewed paper on orthopedic wounds considered at higher risk for prolonged dr drainage, dehiscence and infection. So it, it really is almost like the worst case scenario. Um, thin strips of black foam were applied over a sutured or stapled wound and you can see in that image uh, that a drainage tube is used to apply the negative pressure. The rationale behind it was that there were high levels of post-operative edema um, and are believed to limit perfusion and give rise to prolonged drainage, exposed the incision to the risk of infection. So negative pressure wound therapy uh, is thought to be able to reduce the post-op edema and manage the drainage. Uh, note also that the uh, negative pressure devices are, are full-size pumps. So PICO is a single use negative pressure wound therapy system um, that completely portable and clinically effective in the treatment of surgical chronic and acute wounds. Um, what I wanted to bring to your attention was just a couple of points here and then I'll finish up. Um, it's got a multifunctional dressing with a four layer design. Um, the top film that you can see is, uh, has a high moisture vapor trans transmission rate, which allows a one-way transpiration of exudate vapor, which is extremely important. Um, it also has a proprietary absorbent layer that moves exudate away from the wound and initiates evaporation. It has a unique airlock technology, which maintains open airflow and allows even distribution of negative pressure across the dressing. And the silicone contact allows fluid to pass and minimize uh, pain removal. So those are just uh, a couple of the uh, points. The pump technology is a discrete and very portable pump. Um, and the effectiveness of traditional negative pressure wound therapy in almost a pocket sized canister free system. So this delivers a continuous negative pressure um, of around 80 nominal for up to seven days of therapy and PICO manages exudate fluid manages uh, uh, fluid manages by a combination of absorption and evaporation. Um, the, la the last slide is um, on evidence. So there's various uh, modes of action in terms of how it works. Um, in terms of closed surgical incisions, the mode of action is based on six different kind of you know, ways in terms, in terms of protecting the wound. So it can decrease uh, the wound edema and congestion. It will stimulate the lymphatic system as well. Um, the removal of the exudate, it improves in blood flow. Um, there's reduced lateral tension on incision and also it increases the tensile strength of the incision as well. Um, these, these just incidentally lead to uh, a reduction in the likelihood of any kind of hematoma or uh, seroma from appearing and also the reduction in the risk of any kind of dehiscence. Um, the best source of information for the mode of action of negative pressure wound therapy in closed incision is in a fantastic paper um, that is written by Dr. Sudhir Kalecki. Um, and it's a negative pressure wound therapy for management of the surgical incision in orthopedic sur uh, surgery, uh, a review of evidence and mechanisms for an emerging indication. So it's uh, extremely relevant for this audience. Um, so just wanted to very quickly touch on this. It's a, 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 a paper, Redex et al, published two evaluations in high BMI patients that were undergoing repair of acetubular fracture using traditional negative pressure wound therapy devices. Um, and that was set up for three days on closed incision. Um, and in the latter series, the incidence of infection and dehiscence reduced approximately sixfold. So that's from 6% to, to 1%. Uh, and from 3% to then 0.5% respectively. 
uh, when compared against historical cases um, and introduction of incisional negative pressure wound therapy. So just to summarize, um, while not all wounds are preventable, we are committed to supporting clinicians in uh, improving patient outcomes. Um, time principles is a logical way for you to look at a wound and assess how am I going to go about treating it. Um, and as the doctors mentioned, it's important for a holistic evaluation of each of the patient. Look at the patient as a whole. Um, Smith & Nephew's Advanced Portfolio Solution helps you to manage post-surgical incision sites uh, to prevent surgical site complications as well as preventing delays in wound healing. And we uh, continue to invest and develop our portfolio across indications um, that you can see on your screen, um, as well as supporting a variety of um, surgical specialties, including uh, orthopedic surgeons, plastic surgeons, such as everybody on the call today. So I hope I kept to time and provided some valuable information. Thank you very much. Thank you.